So yeah, welcome everybody to this around presentation um, and documentation of the Gravity Sketch Footwear project with Joey Camus. Uh, we're excited to share the progress that we've made and uh, the exciting steps that we've we've experienced. So I'm I'm Joey Camus. Um, I've been a footwear designer since 2018. Like she said, started at Columbia Sportswear, and then I was at Reebok for a few uh, like two and a half years. Designed like a lot of the um, all like classic stuff um, club C and classic leather. And then I did a, a short, um, freelance thing with Kanye West following that. And then, um, since then I've been an independent footwear designer and, uh, also co-founder Cal co-founder and, uh, head designer of the a brand melon that I started with, an, um, a group of friends, including Finn Rush Taylor, who's another gravity sketch user. Um, and, and gravity sketch, um, is kind of, um, become a big part of my like design process that we'll get into as we go through this whole project. But I use it to like ideate, sketch, conceptualize, and get like near ready, near production ready um, models for the factory. And it's just become like a really big uh, communication tool in my whole process. Um, so yeah, and then we can kind of just go into the project and we'll get more into the, like the details of, of, of those things. Yeah, so I'll talk really quick about what this project is and why we decided to take on a project like this at Gravity Sketch. So um, like Danielle said, I'm the director of design consulting and I kind of kicked off the idea of this project when we realized we really needed to showcase a detailed footwear workflow for our total community to see as an example um, and to help everyone understand all the different possibilities in their own workflows and how to address certain roadblocks they might hit as they're trying to um, move from a more traditional process through to using different digital technologies to solve some problems. So we wanted to use Gravity Sketch in a project, um, especially enhancing the communication to unlock all sorts of difficulties that are consistently present in a traditional process. Um, and we want to understand, we wanted to take this to understand all of the different ways we can start problem solving at the very, very early stages of design and ideation to eliminate multiple rounds of physical sampling and um, due to like design errors and to understand the best mix between digital and physical parts of the process. So when we were starting to think through what this project would be, we decided we really wanted Joey to be the partner that we worked with um, for a couple of different reasons. One, because of his design aesthetic <laughs> being pretty rad. Um, and then also because he's not only an industry footwear designer who understands the entire like traditional workflow and current industry process, but he's also been pushing the boundaries between um, traditional shoemaking and footwear innovation using digital tools. Um, and I'm going to let Joey talk a little bit to the, uh, the design brief of it and the meld between Gravity Sketch as a brand and his own personal aesthetic. Yeah, so um, so this is like a really interesting brief and it was kind of cool because I had the full like creative freedom to, to like uh, design something with my own personal like aesthetic, but mixing it in with the Gravity Sketch, like their mission and their ethos. And so in the early talks, I was meeting with Danielle and Shay and talking to them about like gravity sketch and why they started it and how it's become what it is and how they, you know, make decisions, um, for the, for the tool as they create it and, and grow it. Um, and like intuitiveness, physicality, immediacy, where a lot of the, the words that come up, like some of the ethos about the brand. And so I wanted to take, um, it was just like a really cool opportunity to take those different things and, and kind of merge it with my aesthetic and create a, a actual shoe out of that and implement those kind of uh, those ethos into the, not only the aesthetic, but like the functionality of the shoe. Um, and yeah, and I think uh, if we go to the next slide and kind of talk about the next, next step of that. So the, the inspiration for this, the shoe that you'll um, see later on the presentation, I, I take a lot of inspiration from, from nature often. And, and um, I'll go into a little bit more depth about the, the inspiration coming from like the, the, the frog on the next slide. But the, one of the things was like functional nature and tying that into the, the, you know, the gravity sketch ethos and, and all that and the functionality of shoes. And this, um, uh, this, this cactus that I uh, kind of came across this image of a cactus that came across was interesting. It was uh, the function of it is that uh, as it like becomes dehydrated and, and 
and if it does, if it has like not enough water for a, lot, a certain amount of time, it gets um, instead of like cracking and breaking and, and dying, it shrivels up and kind of creates this protective barrier. But it also has like a really soft and like almost like um, like comfortable like uh, aesthetic and, and visual to it. And so I wanted that like that visual to visual and function to like play into the 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 actual design of the shoe. So having like a visual like um, like soft but protective type of aesthetic and then uh going into like the the micro details the micro textures of the of the shoe um so like the the whole like uh the whole design of the shoe kind of takes inspiration visually from like the actual like the texture and shape of the of uh of the patterns of the frog but the the details of the outsole like the textures um really come from the functionality of their feet like at a at a zoomed in level, you, they have these kind of like hexagonal like shaped pads that create this like multi-directional traction. And then if you go even further, they have like these like sub divided um, textures of that same kind of pattern. And so that a lot of that like influenced the functionality of the, of the outsole on this of of this shoe. And then uh, Austin, if you want to go to the next slide, I can talk about the, uh, the ideation process or Austin, I think you can uh, start this one off. Yeah. So just want to talk briefly about the workflow um, that Joey sort of approached with this project. And you'll notice there's a few different steps in the workflow. Um, and the cool part about this is we use Gravity Sketch at every step. So if you notice, we, we started with that early sketching, or Joey did, and we moved into ideation and then modeling. And then what did that look like at handoff and then furthermore to, to communication? Um, and I really want to focus on the sketching and ideation portion, and Joey will talk about this more. Um, but what was really cool was to watch Joey sort of generate these ideas really quickly and then be able to overlap those ideas um, before he even got into a surfacing phase. Yeah, so um, I think one of the, like, the, the biggest like unlocks as a designer from using Gravity Sketch has been in like the early phases of it, of like the sketching and ideation of it. Um, normally we sketch on like an iPad or pen and paper or something or like Illustrator, something two dimensional, um, but we're designing ultimately a 3D product. So when we, I'm able to like sketch and have these like lines start forming um, in a three dimensional way, you, you already start visualizing how those lines are going to actually look from the top view, from the side view, from all the views you're going to actually see. And you're not, you know, you're not waiting on, um, just like a physical sample to come back based on some 2d drawings and end up, you know, you're just kind of guessing what that top view is going to look like. You can take a pretty good estimate, but it's gonna, um, if you can have something that, you know, is exactly how you envision it, you can make that with like the, the early sketching. And, and so, I think if we go to the, the next slide and kind of go more into that, like that ideation process and the sketching, and there should be like, a, I think a little video with it too. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, um, is it, was this the next one or? I think go back one slide, Austin. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. So yeah, um, anyway, um, but yeah, like, so like just to go like a little bit more in depth into like the ideation process and like, uh, you know, I'm able to bring in some rough doodles and sketches from from photos or screenshots. I can bring in the last. I can bring in any inspiration images and and just start building these wireframes and start envisioning how like the you know the main lines of the the shoe are going to look like the overall silhouette and like the important lines and um, you know even solve problems here and proportions and and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean it's it's just like it's just crazy how like how much faster I can get like an idea like this ready to start surfacing. And um, it's already kind of set up for uh, 3D surfacing to have a 3D model. So now, yeah, I can go to the next one now. Awesome, uh, yeah. So this video just dives a bit into um, the review process, the initial review process with Joey. So um, this process was a really fun one and i'll let austin jump in as well here uh, because she was a part of this review but being able to experiencing these sketches with joey in the space was really powerful and and you can see all of these models and designs that he cranked out super quickly um, and then on top of that being able to actively like review and ideate with him was a really powerful tool as well so um, i'll pass it over to austin and let her 
sort of talk about this also. Yeah, I'll say this is probably the most collaborative review session I've ever had because everybody was able to be in there like drawing together. It was almost like a sketch throwdown, but with like the the models there, some surfaces a little bit, we were all kind of diving in, zooming in, drawing and sketching in different places, asking questions, being able to like dive inside of all of the different shoes. Um, kind of talk through with Joey and be able to understand his intention behind every single little piece, um, which just gave us a lot more of an understanding of his design intent at a really early stage. Yeah, and um, and I think one of the things that was that was kind of cool and like and and almost like funny at the beginning is the beginning of the the project that was like okay, well I'll come to the table with like three or four sketches or of concepts and. And in my head, and when I'm thinking sketches, I'm just thinking like, okay, a gravity sketch sketch, which ended up being all these concepts and models that I was able to make. So, um, you know, they're not like final refined designs, but they were um, detailed enough where you can kind of catch the essence and the the expression of what I was going for, whether it's just adding a quick lacing or a, adding a, like some, some quick like forms to show that there's like padding in these certain areas. And so like... Um, I was able to make all these models so quick and showed up to that first call with four like 3D modeled concepts, which is like kind of just how my process has become. But it was kind of unexpected because they, I know, I think people were expecting maybe some like some doodles and some some wireframe sketches with some surfacing. But um, the like sub details kind of really sped up that that process and allowed me to um, come to like initial reviews with something that is gonna look almost exactly what it would look like. And we can kind of, um, you know, go from there and make decisions that are more accurate, I think, um, than, than if you're just trying to get guessing, like from a lateral view sketch, um, you're, you're not seeing like the full, the full thing. Um, and that, and that'll kind of like play into the, the next slide, Austin, if you want to go to that of the, of how we got to the, the final concept here. Um, and so like aesthetically, we, we all kind of like aligned with this um, this one concept and then functionality we pulled from different different concepts like there was some that had laces some were no laces some had like more traditional kind of parts like a heel tab and heel counter and all that but tying it back into those like gravity sketch ethos of the the intuitiveness the immediacy and the physicality i wanted to um design the shoe to be more of a slip on something without laces, something that's quick and more intuitive way of putting something on your foot. So, you know, I'm able to go inside the shoe and design how that elastic band looks on the inside. I can model out all these zones of where padding should be to create like a, that, um, like visual comfort, but also some protection on the top of your foot around your ankle. And then lastly, like the, uh, the heel counter piece, it's like a two in one, like molded piece. I want to do something really different here, but have that like an intuitive, interesting, like um, unique uh, touch point interaction, kind of like how how you have with gravity sketches, something that um, is definitely a unique experience. So that heel tab acting as the support and like a, a, a heel counter piece, but it's an external piece. And it also kind of um, uh, forms upward into uh, like dual like heel tabs that, that uh, meshes in with the with the upper of the shoe and creates like a way to kind of pull the shoe open from the heel in a, in a, a unique way with some nice like um, nice touch points that kind of just like um, intuitive way to like do you kind of know how you should put the shoe on it um, essentially and then um, from there I mean just directly from gravity sketch uh, I was able to then um, you know, take my model into, uh, you know, export it into other things like uh, Blender and Keyshot and, and take renderings. And I think it's, um, it's more important than some people think, I think, to have, be able to have like uh, really nice, like high quality renderings as part of the design process and not just something to like, that's cool to look at. It's, it's something that this early in the stage, we can see what it looks like from every single angle. Um, and I can start messing around with textures and, and, materials and colorways and all that stuff and see how things are actually going to look um and get as close to close as real life to as possible um so when we're making those decisions that um we're handing off to the factory we can kind of at, take a, a a closer or make a closer estimate to what it'll actually look like so our decisions are more accurate 
saves time, saves money, saves parts, saves uh, steps in the sample process. And we'll kind of get into the, the, the handoff phase from like this to the factory um, on the next slide, Austin. And so I'll just kind of uh, intro this part off real quick about like, so I already have my design. It's already built a pretty close to a last because I was able to design it around a last, a 3D file in Gravity Sketch. And so, you know, we already have something the factory can work with. And it was a matter of just like kind of tweaking things here and there and making sure it's as close to the last as possible. But from there, um, uh, able to hand it off to to Austin from the development end, and and he can kind of take you through that process of of taking my model and and communicating it um, from his end to the to the factory. Yeah. So with this part of the process, um, it was really fun. So we did a couple things actually. We were kind of experimenting as we were doing this. Um, so you can see sort of this like three D tech pack that we built out in Gravity Sketch. Um, and not only did we share Gravity Sketch files with the factory, we also shared Rhino files. Um, so what you see in this in this um, slide here is we have two different types of geometry on the left side. Um, one of them being the the native sub D geometry that Joey created in Gravity Sketch, um, which was one part of the file that we sent. Uh, something that was really cool about that was the factory didn't have a ton of background knowledge on sub D geometry. So we actually made a short video showing them um, sort of how Joey built his model in Gravity Sketch and then how that sub D geometry actually relates in Rhino as well and how they could utilize that sub D geometry um, to edit and manipulate really quickly um, to communicate their ideas and thoughts back to us. Uh, something that was really powerful too was the factory was really quick to see um, parts of Joey's model that wouldn't, wouldn't work. Uh, so within that tech pack process, giving them the 3d file, instead of these 2d blueprints, they were able to sort of visualize those things and give us quick feedback. Um, in terms of tech packing, we didn't give them any, uh, 2d blueprints. We did give a few traditional, um, tech pack images. So Joey was able to spec out the soul plate. Um, and that was about the extent of the 2D tech packs. Um, and that was that was really amazing to see. And the feedback was really positive. Um, I'll let Austin sort of touch on that if she wants. But that was kind of my perspective with, with Handoff. Yeah, I would just say that, um, you know, a, we our 2D tech pack that was included was probably three pages um, versus like the traditional more like... 20, 30, 40 page long tech packs. Um, and, and that's including the tooling tech pack and the upper as well. So we did do some uh, lay flat communication as well for the upper using UV unwrapping from Joey's 3D model, which was really, really fun. Cool. Yeah, so- um, go, go back. What's that? Oh, the last one. Quick. Yeah, so like this is kind of like a, a cool like 3D model that that captures like what it was like communicating in in VR and working on these design revisions. You can kind of see our little callouts and like redlining and all that, and just kind of making adjustments. And it's 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 cool that like this is like the maybe first or second like model that we got back from the factory, and to be able to just make these really really refined like tiny detailed changes and zoom in and see that there's like a uh, a slight like divot in the surface we don't want or the line extends too much or just like small details like that that you normally wouldn't see from you wouldn't kind of capture from a, a, a blueprint or or a, a 3d file looking at it any other way but like when we can zoom in and see those details like it just like uh it allowed us to get those all those details as close as possible like down to like the, the millimeter um and you can kind of see like how small our perspective is to the shoe. And that's really like the, from like the headset size to like where we were in the shoe and making those kind of refinements. And if you guys had, I know you guys probably had other, other um, thoughts on the communication and stuff, but uh, that was kind of my uh, perspective of that. Yeah. I, uh, so from the factory, this, this is a 3d file that is a pretty close representation of the model that we gave them originally. 
Um, so they were able to sort of help us out. You notice the detail in the plate, um, and they were able to do that from Joey's 2D tech pack. But in terms of a 3D file, they were able to use Joey's original model, make small edits or adjustments where they needed to, and then give us that 3D file back. So we could then take that 3D file and then review it in Gravity Sketch together. Um, and that was, this process for me was really fun. Uh, you can see all of the iterations and, and comments that we're making in there. Um, and then on top of that, we were able to share this 3D file back to the factory with all of these um, lines and text to communicate our ideas exactly. Um, there was one particular part that I thought was really cool on the heel. Um, Joey really got in there and zoomed in and, and found this area that was sort of concaved a little bit more than he wanted. And he actually rebuilt that area in Gravity Sketch. And we used that geometry to send and communicate to the factory. And, and the feedback was really swift. Um, and then last thing for me in, in terms of communication, getting these files from the 3D factory, it gives us the ability to 3D print or rapid prototype print. Um, and we actually have one. So I created a 3D print of Joey's model. And we were able to just have a really quick understanding of shapes, proportions, and uh, and get a good idea of, of how the model is gonna, gonna look. So um, that's just another wrinkle to the communication process that um, sort of changes the game. And I think we have a video on the right next slide. Yeah, yeah so this kind of just shows us that you guys like, how like we are working out those different lines. We can like show exactly how we want the curve to look uh, like, you know, re reworking a surface. If there's kind of like a, a, something that's like, you know, there was something that wasn't too smooth on the heel. I didn't like the shape of it. We were able to kind of re resurface it, redraw where those lines should go. And we're all, it's like this collaborative effort. We can see it from every single angle. We can, we're seeing millimeters of space that looked like a, a foot wide in, in our perspective. So it's like, I think this video kind of captures just like that revision process, how much detail you can do. And this is um, just all happening in like a shared collaborative room um, in VR in, in Gravity Sketch. So like it has, you know, we're able to, you know, uh, tweak the model itself and not only just adding like revision lines too. Cool. Yeah, for me, I, I love watching this um, because of that collaborative um communication in the space there's not any back and forth we're not having to send emails to and from each other to communicate ideas uh, we're not using photoshop to to sort of draw those ideas and hope that the other person gets it we're in the space together and we're communicating together and we're making those adjustments together um, which means we're problem solving right so that for me was was really fun and and again this was just so exciting to to do and a space together yeah and uh, i just want to like add one last thing on like to the whole the whole thing of like the communication process like i i work a lot with um the designer uh like finn rush taylor and he's he's out in london he has a similar workflow as me with the vr stuff and you know i'm in boston he's in london we're able to just pop in our headsets and live work on stuff that's like ma making models that's like ready to go and just hang out and share inspiration share models like we take a take a design and both kind of collaborate on our own versions of it and and have it you know 3d print ready immediately so that was just like another interesting thing again like we're all in different places around the world make and talking about this 3d model um in in virtual space it's really cool and then yeah so here's like some final renderings i um did towards the end once we had the like the design locked in the the factory kind of said okay these are this is what we can do this is what we can't do this is like uh another way to just visualize the shoe what it's going to look like i can mess around with textures and and see what the different materials will look like so we can confirm that for the factory and and um on top of that it's just a good way like i immediately have this like 3d asset that's exactly what it's going to look like and i can experiment with colors i can figure out what colorways are going to look good uh what's going to look bad and we don't have to necessarily test that um with samples and and we kind of just got to this point because to where the the triple black because it there's a lot of uh different textures and shapes and forms interacting with each other and it, it kind of just like 
highlights just that and not taking anything away with the color and also makes it more a bit more like wearable and um uh, easier to style and 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 all that so yeah that's uh the end as you saw austin had a 3d print that was our like first um 3d print straight from the straight from vr and uh now we're just on to the uh the sampling phase at this point and that wraps up the presentation for us thank you so much for this it was yeah i mean obviously i have been following the process but it's been really good to hear kind of like the whole story all together with the three of you and like really hearing your perspective on how this process really helped you kind of like understand the entire workflow from beginning to end although we're still not at the end um but you know still to come so stay tuned everyone um austin can you show us the shoe again because it, you were so small that we couldn't shoot see yeah of course Nice. Yeah, so you can see, I actually, uh, this is the printed last as well, but I have a sock over the top of it just to represent um, material thickness. At first, when I sent Joey the photo, he was like, uh, dude, they messed up the <laughs> upper design. This is not right. So, um, but you can see, yeah, so I printed the midsole um, and then I actually printed the 3D pieces with it as well and glued them to the side. Um, and this just gives us a good idea of how these pieces are going to line up on the upper. So you can place this up here and then sort of begin to wrap it around. And this gives us a good idea of how those pieces are going to interact together. So um, and this is instead of getting, you know, your your files from the factory and your 3D models and wood bolts from the factory, we were able to produce this 3D um, print within a day to a day and a half. So we have pretty immediate feedback and we're able to understand all the shapes and forms. So, yeah. All right. I have a few questions for you guys and then we'll open up um, for our guest uh, speaker joining and then for the audience. So there's going to be a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> so for Joey, what does your creative process look like in Gravity Sketch? Um, I usually sometimes I go into it with just like an idea in my head and don't even start sketching. Sometimes I just like pull in a few inspiration images, some a last and, and a few other things. And then I just start, um, just start wireframing and just start like getting like really expressive with forms and stuff. And, and if I do any surfacing in the early stages of like the, the creative process, it's like really loose. Nothing's like exact, just kind of figuring out like, uh, we're th like just just exploring forms and shapes and nailing down like a silhouette um it's it's not always the same process because sometimes i will you know um come in with like a few doodles from like my, my ipad or even just like a, a post-it note but i you know bring those in and use those as reference um but i think it's you know one of the things is like the creative process sometimes is like i have an exact idea and i'm gonna go in and make that but sometimes i can just like have a loose idea, get it experimental with like shapes and forms and just drawing lines and kind of, and, and sometimes the tool like just allows me to, to stumble on like a, a solution or even just an aesthetic um, choice just like that. So it's kind of, it's kind of a loose uh, creative process sometimes. Yeah. You said something really interesting and Shay was commenting in the chat as well that like you, that you made him rethink his concept of sketching and that's very true, right? Like, because you're not because you're sketching lines, that means that you're sketching. And then if you're starting to use some 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 other tool within Gravity Sketch, like, you know, the volume tool or like surfacing or anything, it is still a sketch, right? Is it still a sketch for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of is because it's the, um, I mean, the, that's the thing is like with, a, with a, a sketch or a rendering that, you know, as for any like, you know, industrial designer, like you're, um, you're trying to get that render as like close to possible to like what it looks like. So when you pitch it to like a client or something or, or whatever, they can get the best idea of what it's going to look like. And because I can do, it doesn't feel like modeling necessarily because it is very expressive in sketching. And the fact that I can just have a more realistic and uh, close to real life end result to communicate to like the client or whoever um, it's basically just like, I mean, it is a model and it is a rendering, but it's a, 
it's kind of the sketch because it's the sketch turns into the uh, realistic model. So yeah, it's kind of a blurred blurred line at this point, but <laughs> it's something so new that we don't even know how to call it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, how did gravity sketch? This is for Yogi once again. How did uh, gravity sketch help transform your creative approach? Um, it just um, it it just helped me like get ideas out so much faster. I think um, there's so many ideas I've had where I've sketched on paper and it just didn't, it didn't uh, translate or took really long to translate to, to real life. And it, to be able to go into like gravity sketch, make something and then make a copy of it, make an iteration of it and make another copy and just keep making a bunch of iterations. Like I think it just sped up, um, sped up the process pretty much. Like they just, that's kind of how like it, it changed my, I guess, that path. So, yeah. Why is it important to speed up your process? I mean, I, th I know it's kind of like an obvious question, mm. but, you know, different people want to speed it up for different reasons. So I'm curious to hear yours. Yeah. I mean, I think if, it, if you have a faster process, you have more time to explore more ideas. Um, that's one reason why. And then, and sometimes you're just on a, you know, a shorter deadline and you just need to, Able, I mean, you just need to like make something faster and you can get further in the process, I think, with this. Um, but I think, yeah, the main thing really is just like having more time to explore more ideas because it's uh, you're not spending time on just like, a, you know, a few a few ideas. You can. Yeah, you have more time for that. All right. This one is for all of you guys. So what was the most surprising thing that you got out of this project? Um, Austin, you're smiling. Austin with a Y. So maybe you haven't. <laughs> I think for me, and this is just being ingrained in like a traditional footwear process my entire career, um, was how open the factory was to A, solving processes in a way they'd never done before, and B, like how excited they were to find that the the model we were able to give them as like the design ideation model was super usable for them to take and modify to make it a production ready model um, in other softwares and kind of a back and forth. And so they were really excited to, it saved them as much time as it saved us from a design side. It saved them the same amount of time from a like production side to have something to start with. Um, so that that was most exciting for me. Mm. Answer. Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah. Um, for me, it was it was that same thing, and then being able to sort of seamlessly transfer these three D files back and forth. So get these three D files from the factories, bring them into Gravity Sketch, review them as a group, send those reviewed files back to the factory. That whole process was just so quick and it was so fun and my perspective on on uh review just changed right because it's not your traditional 2d blueprint review we haven't seen a 2d blueprint all of the adjustments that we've made have been from that 3d file that the factory is giving us and and to sort of backpack off what austin was saying from a traditional um, footwear workflow that's just very uncommon so, yeah, and I, I think um, I think one of the most surprising things was definitely what um, what Austin was saying about how the the, you know, the factory being open to working like that and with the 3D files and potentially even in VR itself. But um, I think just like I, I was thinking, OK, well, we're still going to end up having like still like a normal tech pack in this and we'll still have to like draw normal like for the most part like a normal tech pack without a few things excluded but like when we only needed it really to kind of label out like um just like texturing of the of the mold and and some of like the outsole like the in intricacies of the outsole detail and the the rubber like tread pattern and all that like that was pretty much all we needed the actual like uh illustrator tech pack for which was that was like the most surprising thing to me i thought maybe we'd had to like circle back and communicate more that way. There were like no measurements because everything was one-to-one -one actual scale. We didn't have to label any measurements for anything. 
Yeah. And, and yeah. in that design process in gravity sketch, you can take those measurements, like, or at least like pretty close measurements with that, that tool. So you can lay out like, you know, how high is the, you know, the heel and all that kind of stuff. So around the collar, just so, you know, um, not, not just guessing, but like actually, um, mapping some of those measurements out without needing to label it. It's a massive change to the entire workflow. And so what do you think this will mean for the, for the creative process for future footwear design workflows? Like, you know, now that you're able to remove this element of creating mm -hmm. such a detailed tech pack. Yeah. I think it's going to just be, I think it's going to be, and we're already seeing it. More people are going to work this way. It'll, more people will be able to, uh, some people that don't normally communicate through, um, sketching or drawing they have a there's a new way to communicate i think that'll bring more ideas into the footwear design space i mean there's just like there's just like so many things i think it'll it'll kind of bring to that but because there's i mean there's already people that they they don't really sketch much they just kind of rip apart shoes and re um explore pieces that way physically but i think that's just like at least for me this is it kind of uh um changed my like footwear design process just because it's a it's a tool that makes sense for me. And I think there's a lot of people that it'll, it'll make sense for. Yeah. And I think it's important to know too, that you don't always need a surface 3d model to communicate with the factory. Um, just as long as you have a 3d asset, I feel like that is important on any level. So being able to have a 3d asset, whether it's a wireframe or a sketch or, even a halfway done surface model, just giving the factory something to sort of stand on and visualize in a 3D form is, is really important too. So, All right. So, I mean, we have so many questions from the audience and we've also invited some um, guests um, from guest speakers for the Q&A. So I would love to invite Jared and Alexander from New Balance to join us on stage to ask a few questions about the project. <clears throat> hey guys. Hey, what's hey. Up? Nice to meet you, Joey, over the video chat. Good to meet you. Nice. Welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, we can hey, see guys. you now. Well, over to you um, for, for some All questions right. that you have. Yeah. Yeah. I could start it off, Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Take it away. All right. So, yeah, I just want to say awesome presentation, guys. Um, and Joey, I really appreciate the unconstrained creativity that you convey through your work. And this is really what I feel like makes your work unique to you. Like you're able to stay loose and expressive and kind of have fun with it. And this is something I'm definitely working towards um but yeah my first question to be like in what ways do you feel that gravity schedule uh froze activity sorry it froze for a second oh i said what ways do you think gravity sketch uh would help you unlock this creativity mm. yeah i mean like i think it um it really just like because sometimes i just have like ideas in my head and visuals of I'll see something and be inspired by it. And I, I can get it on paper, but sometimes it's just like, you know, I could sketch it in a perspective view or whatever, but like sometimes you just can't capture it exactly. And I think the unlock and like create it creatively, it's, it's really just let me like, I can make exactly what I'm envisioning in my head because I'm, I'm sketching, you know, sketching in a three, three D space and like with different types of tools, different types of, visuals, whether it's the, the wireframe, like the stroke ink tool or, or the surfacing, or even just like the, you know, a volume tool and just like making shapes like that. I, I think that's where the, the like creative unlocks kind of been for that. Sweet. Cool. I, I had a, you know, you got, I think you guys hit on a really big topic here, this design to manufacturing. And, you know, it's something that I think a lot of brands are trying to unlock. Um, can you talk a little bit more from like the factory side on how did you get them kind of on board to change the way that they typically do something? You know, we always find that they want to go to a 2D blueprint first and then go back to 3D. Um, did you get them, you know, a headset and were they using 
gravity sketch on the other side to do like virtual, um, you know, like product breakdowns with them. Austin, you want to take that? Yeah. Um, so we gave them, and, and first of all, we were really lucky to have the, the factory partner that we do um, because they were so open to, you know, this innovation and sort of this idea that we had. Um, but we actually gave them, you know, not just the Rhino files, but the gravity sketch files. Um, we didn't actually have a collaborative, collaborative like uh, group discussion with them. Um, but over like Zoom calls and, and meet calls, we were able to break down some of these um, 3D models. So we didn't actually do it in the collaborative space, but uh, we, we were able to review over the call and passing back that 3D file and using the tools in Gravity Sketch to sort of like iterate and communicate and give back to them. We almost didn't need to have that synced up conversation. One thing I will say is we used Screen Collab with them, um, mm. which is a newer tool so that they could not necessarily have to be in a VR headset, but they could rotate around stuff and we could live on a Zoom call while sharing, like, or basically in Screen Collab could comment on a file together in a conversation while they were rotating around stuff. And the I feel like part of the reason they were so open to not having to do blueprints was because we showed them initially how they can modify to, to make it more precise. So they didn't feel the need once they understood, oh, wow, I can really take these strokes and surfaces that might be wiggly or, or not have the exact to the 10th millimeter precision that I need and make it really easily to be that. Um, they were then really open to just doing it from there. Yeah, it's interesting because I heard you guys talking and, and a lot of things you hit on are things that, that we've been talking about, but the, like the sub demodeling, uh, the fact that like the, the tooling shops typically work in Rhino in, in a different format. And then, you know, how do you get everybody to start working in the same format so that that file can go back and forth? They can give you edits and say, hey, we can't manufacture this. You can take it back, make those modifications. Um, I, I think that's a big deal, starting to like speak that same language. Um, another question I had for you, um, more with the upper that you're talking about, uh, were you able to unlock um, going from like a UV to a, a shell pattern or something? Because that's, that's another thing that I think a lot of people are, are struggling with. Yeah, yeah I mean, so... Oh, go ahead, Joey. I was just going to say, I was going to say, you take it. <laughs> you did it. You did it. <laughs> yeah. So we actually used Joey's model um, and UV unwrapped that to get a flat paper pattern. Um, and then we gave that flat paper pattern breakdown to the factory. Um, also letting them know that it's not going to be perfect, but at least giving them a place to start. Um, and that seemed to be really helpful. Yeah, I will say too, like we don't have a pattern engineer on our end. So we did rely on a pattern engineer at a factory to help us with what very, very specific changes they would have to make once we looked at like the UV unwrap made design choices on what that meant for um, making changes on our end, sending it to them. And then they looked at it and came back to us with whatever changes they felt like they needed. But um, we all started from that same flat visual that came from Joey's upper model. We'll have to see how you guys do that. Yeah, that's I kind of like part of the next steps that we haven't, we don't have visuals for yet because we're still working through the full upper portion. Um, we're just now finalizing the tooling and moving into what that might mean for producing tooling and then finalizing upper is kind of at the same time. Sweet. I have a question uh, for everyone. Um, so one of the challenges I'm sure we're all facing is moving away from those 2D tech packs and making the whole process 3D. Um, I'd love to hear the perspective on how you think the 3D nature 
coupled with like 3D printing could naturally evolve footwear. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, uh, I think a lot of the tech packing stuff is like trying to explain 3D stuff and 2D and you have all these different views and you have all these different angles and, and you're as close as you can get to accuracy and, and like blueprints and stuff like that. You're still, you're still guessing. Well, like if you're doing like a section view or something, you're still like sort of guessing how that's going to look and it might translate different once you get that thing back from the factory. But when I think, I think the, the big thing is like you're uh, when, when you're making it in 3d and starting it in 3d, you're, you're getting exactly um, you'll get exactly what you made back. So you already know, you don't need to like necessarily map out those, those section views and spend all that time. And, and um, I mean, even then within the surface, the section views is like the, how does the surfacing between those views look? It's, there's a bit of guessing from the factories and it, it there's always the, the thing where you get like a prototype or a 3d print back. And it's, um, it's not exactly how you envisioned it, even if they were pretty accurate to what you what you drew. So, yeah, that makes sense. A lot less interpretation overall. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's just like it's just as a communicate. Like this whole thing is like is just making the communication better. It's it's you can get you can get closer to what you're actually trying to communicate so much faster. Um, and and you know whether it's the whole shoe or you're just like or you just need to do it for like a, like a heel piece or like a, a, a molded piece on the upper or something like that. Like it can be used for like all those little parts too. That might be, that might take up a, a you know, a couple of pages of tech packing and, and different angles and views. Instead you can, you know, just model, model it real quick and add some, some call outs to it in the, in like a 3d, in a 3d space. Joey, I had a question. Um, I think the last time we probably spoke was in, in a pencil class back yeah. at New Bound, way back. Um, I, I've been watching what you've been doing on Instagram and, and it's been awesome to see. Was there like an unlock for you when you said, you know, like I went from that 2D to 3D and it's something, it was it a program? Was it somebody that you're following? Because I think that's what a lot of designers are struggling with. Like, how do they make that jump? I'm interested to hear what that was for you. Yeah, I mean, like I had tried to learn so many other 3D programs just like independently myself. I, I in school uh, I, as an industrial designer, we learned, at least in my school, the main thing was like SolidWorks, which just doesn't translate to footwear at all. Um, and so uh, the next thing was like, okay, well, I'll try to learn Rhino or I'll try to learn Blender. And there's lots of tutorials and stuff like that. But it was just like, it, it was just like getting me to the point where I was like, okay, well, I can make some things that I, you know, if I have some if I have tech pack drawings, I can like use those orthographics to make something in 3d. But, but when, um, when I was at uh, Reebok and uh, I was working with uh, Brian Ronella, who has been using gravity sketch for much longer than me, like he, when he introduced me to, to gravity sketch there, um, I mean, just like simply just like using the, the, the ink tool and just like making curves in space and all that kind of stuff. Like that was kind of the unlock for me because um at that point I wasn't able to make like realistic things, but I was able to um, make a bunch of things. That's kind of what like, um, it, it, it let me make a whole bunch of like weird, like crazy conceptual type of things, which is what I was posting on my Instagram at the time, which was like, that was the unlock with 3d for me was like, okay, I can make all this, um, these crazy visuals and stuff. And then at that point I was um, kind of doing that, that like doodling, I guess allowed me to then have all those skills to be like, okay, well, I know how these tools work now. I can make it work for a, you know, a real, real shoe, a real model. So I think, yeah, that was, I hadn't had much like legit um, 3d like software experience other before that really. Yeah. It feels like that's um, a lot of people's experience with gravity sketch. Now it's just yeah. a little bit simpler a little bit more intuitive and it's not as um i don't know it's not as frightening right to get into yeah. there and, and start doing stuff so I, we've seen it with um you know alexander other people at, at new balance mm -hmm. so i have another question for you joey that's not uh gs specific but 
Um, obviously, you've had a lot of success with creating like an online presence and getting your name out there. And, you know, what would be your advice to any aspiring designers? Because I feel like a lot of designers are like hyper skill focused. And where, where would you recommend that they put their efforts? Um, I mean, like in the end, like a lot of this, um, uh, a lot, most of what footwear design is or, or any type of design is like, it's like problem solving. It's your process. It's how did you solve the problem? What was the, the tools you used to solve that problem? What was the, the thinking process of that? So if you can like capture a thing, I think that's the thing is like, I've, I've done videos in, in the VR and I've done some like time lapses of sketching. And even before that, a little bit of like, you know, some like just rough mock-ups and stuff so if you just share like all those different things or those processes like have a unique take on how you solve the problem how you came up with the design those are like the things that sharing that is what like gets the attention and if you have like a i think just also making a cool way to present those helps so much because like you can have the same idea or same process and it just you can present it in a boring way or a way that's been done before um, but like, I think with the VR videos, I, I wanted to make them look augmented, like how I, uh, like imagine how, like how I see it and not just like take a screen recording and post that. Well, it's interesting. It's not as like cool or, um, attention grabbing as like, uh, when it looks like it's augmented. So it's like just showing your process, but also like, um, you know, like, like just even like just skill set of like, um, if you do have like really nice rendering skills or sketching skills too, like it, it, it's just nice to show like doodles and stuff like that too. Just like just a full well-rounded each part of the process and, and all that. I think that's, those are good things to share to, yeah, to build that profile. Cool. All right. Any more questions, Jared, Alexander? I think we're good. You can, we'll let the rest of the, the world speak to, Joey and team here. Yeah. Um, all right. So I have one question here. Oh, I lost it. There's so many coming in. Joey, um, and this one's from Shay. Uh, and then I'll jump to the rest of the audience. Have you ever been able to work um, one of your designs all the way through like this with full creative direction? If not, how does that feel? How does it change your approach to the design? Um, is he saying like full, like, have I done it like full process in VR, like how we're doing with this? Is that, is that what he's asking? Yeah, or, it sounds like, yeah, whole process with full creative direction. Yeah, I mean, the first time I've done f the full thing is, um, it was a collaborative effort. Again, it was with Finn, the shoe that we're doing with um, with Melon. Um, like that shoe, like we, we were at the phase of like final design. We have samples, we've tested them all that kind of stuff so like we fully um our entire design process for the most part was in vr we did some wireframing we did um we had like mood boards all that kind of stuff the same uh, pretty much same type of process um he's in london i'm here we hopped in the room worked out some models made some tweaks here and there did a bunch of iterations and stuff and and then from there we were able to take that model um merge it with the last and then send that off to to zellerfeld the 3d printing uh company out there in, in germany and um and you know they make their their um i mean they take the 3d model from there and it's pretty much ready to go other than like some technicalities that um on like the basically re uh assigning like traits and stuff to the model so it has like the soft upper and the rigid hard like outsole type thing. But yeah, I mean, we've done that full process and pretty much in VR in Gravity Sketch. Has this process changed your, your approach to design? Because, you know, like, and I remember having a conversation with you um, some weeks ago and, you know, like sometimes when you're designing, knowing that there's this process that you need to follow, you're almost kind of like, holding back a little bit on the extreme things that you can do because you know you're not going to even communicate it in the best way possible through a 2D tech pack, right? So has all of this changed the way that you design? Yeah, I mean, like, um, I mean, it really has. Like, it's become my process now. Like, that, the way I just described that, like, that we've been working with Finn on that shoe, like, that's pretty much my, like my process now is like to start with 3d, start with whether it's a rough wireframe or model, like, 
um, I don't have to worry about. And even when I do like get, um, you know, get oh, like overly expressive or something like that in there, you still like can, you know, take a step back or 3D print it and get a visual of how to actually look and then make adjustments. But that's, yeah, I mean, that's really, it really has changed my, my whole process. It's almost become most of, most of the process, I think. And especially when it's designing 3D printed shoes, but like it's, it helps a ton too, even with um, traditional footwear stuff for sure. Um, all right. Um, do you have any thoughts about the production run you are planning on doing with the shoe? Do I have any thought? Um, well, we're doing. Yeah. Sorry, what? <laughs> it's for all of you guys, but yeah, go for it, Joey. Yeah, uh, I mean, we're gonna do. I think uh, about a hundred pairs of of samples, and I think just the one colorway. I'm not sure yet, um, but then I think I don't know the exact process of how we're or how we're giving or or selling those out or whatever. But um, yeah, it'll be like a hundred pairs. Um, so a super limited run is kind of just like a, a display of this whole process and like the, the end result as like that, that final product. But yeah, I don't know if you had any other things, uh, Danielle, to say on that for how those are. Uh, well, I'm just going to say it's going to be size nine for men. Yes. That part, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That part, yeah. yeah. Um, um, when are we going to see the next season of Joey explores the world in VR? <laughs> we actually had to remove one of those like one of your videos uh sketching in a kayak for our trailer in the in the meta store because they were like we can't have this <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know i don't know how much more of that stuff i can do because like just using it outside is not uh not recommended <laughs> and probably not safe for the device um i did i will say i did do those videos either right after sunset or on a really cloudy day but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll try to find some interesting ways to do VR in different places, but, but probably won't be in kayaks anytime soon. <laughs> um, all right. So I just want to see one last question that we can read. Um, do you work with a 3d scanned, uh, foot at all? Um, no, I've, I use, um, we use a la I use a last for the most part. And like, um, but I guess to go back to like the, the way we've been making, uh, shoes for like 3d printing, um, because you're 3d printing and you're not using a mold or anything like that, you can make, um, customized like footwear to your individual foot. So like uh, the foot scan comes in at that point, um, where people can take their actual foot scan and then, you know, Zellerfeld deals with that. They, they use a standard like last shape that they've designed. And then, um, and then from there, the, the different like measurements kind of adjust to the person's foot based on their scan. Um, but it would be uh, to work with like, unless you're doing like a custom shoe for a specific person or something like that, like working with a foot scan wouldn't be as, as a uh, practical, I think as like a last and then adjusting it, adjusting that last to like a, the, the, those custom like measurements and stuff.